Hello and welcome, Sheriff again here. In this video I want to show you in depth how to set up your joystick, especially the axis, in War Thunder. Yes, I did this video already in German, but this video is of course for my English speaking audience. Who wonders? I get really a lot of messages regarding the difficulties controlling a plane in War Thunder with a new joystick. but. A lot of these problems aren't because the player is dumb or the joystick is damaged, it's because the default setup of War Thunder is very sensitive to input. That causes stalls, makes takeoffs very hard and lead to flat spins very easily. So the standard problems of a War Thunder or a simulator game beginner yeah, are intensifying and the problems are becoming really uh, aggravating. But help us here, in this video you should find some solutions to your problems or you can improve your existing control files. In the background you see footage of a control profile which is not changed at all. Those are the Warthunder defaults. And as you can clearly see I have a really hard time controlling my plane. Especially my elevator axis is wobbling around and makes hitting anything really really hard. My plane stalls from time to time and making precise maneuvers is uh, almost impossible. Keep this footage in mind. We will go now into the controls of War Thunder and we will try to get some improvements. Then later on we will do the same attacks again and we will compare the results. So you should really see the advancements of the new profile. But before I start to recommend any uh, particular changes, let me explain that there are of course very very different setups around. So my setup or some of my tips may not work for you, but the general message and the direction of the changes should help beginners or flight sims a lot. The first thing I want to talk about are the four control categories. Mouse Joy, Simplified Controls, Realistic Controls and Full Real Controls are those options. I personally recommend to select full real controls sooner or later, for a couple of reasons. First, if you select simplified controls you will get a weird instructor like in arcade and realistic. It's interfering with your controls. I had a lot of stalls and weird behavior of my plane as I selected it by accident. Additionally, with the setup of full real controls we will unlock the options engine and trim controls. I will cover those in later videos. I recommend to subscribe if you want to get informed when they go live. If you go for the full real controls, don't worry when you get a message that, that you don't set up all bunch of controls. Most of them aren't really needed. Most of my missing stuff are the gunner views etc. Read them carefully if you have any problems though. And make a backup of your controls if you want to change something for testing. And don't save them just in your yeah, game folder. I recommend to place them somewhere safe. I personally save them in the cloud just in case my system crashes and if I have to install Windows I just can copy the files from there and I have my controls like before. I can really recommend to make a backup of your files just in case. But now for the important part you waited for. The first axis you may want to change is the pitch axis. In a plane with fixed guns you aim mostly with your elevator and the elevator is controlled by the pitch axis of your joystick. By default the War Thunder joystick is incredibly sensitive to input and the first slider you can see is the axis sensitivity and this controls how fast your joystick input gets transferred to the control surfaces of your plane. Simply spoken, if you select the axis sensitivity of 100% the control surface moves almost instantly along with your input. But if you select let's say 10% it slows your input a bit down. In that context it's nice to know that a lot of stalls are caused by too fast movement of the elevator and can be simply avoided by toning down the sensitivity of the pitch axis. In my opinion you don't need any fast and rapid movement in air combat. All maneuvers need steady and precise input. So the target of a good control setting must be maximum precision. And that's the reason I reduce the slider for my joystick to zero. Don't worry, the elevator still moves, but not that fast as before. The aiming with the plane should be now already a bit better. Not much, but better. Now let's open the access menu of the pitch axis with a double click. Here you can see a lot of options, but the first thing I want to make aware of are the two indicators on the top. When I move the joystick you can see them moving around. 
When I pull back the stick fully to the rear, you can see the indicators are moving fully to the right and vice versa to the left. The red indicator displays the deflection of my joystick on my desk. The green indicator is a translated input to the game, so the logical axis. At the moment, the game translates my input in a one-to-one -one ratio. My joystick input gets into the game without any change. That sounds good, right? Answer is, depends. If you have a system where you have a joystick which is in the size of a real joystick of a plane, this is maybe no problem for you. But I bet most of you have a similar joystick like me. So it's very small. And with the movement of a small joystick, it's way harder to make fine adjustments. Because with little movement, you deflect your stick way more than with the same movement with a large stick. To adapt to this and make this a bit easier and controllable, we can change the value of the non-linearity. Like I said, at the moment my input gets into the game by a 1 to 1 ratio. If I deflect my joystick by 50%, the in-game joystick gets deflected by 50% as well. If I deflect my joystick by 100% and the in-game joystick gets deflected by 100%. But if you change the non-linearity to a value of, let's say, 2, the translation curve gets bent to an S-ish curve. Now, the small deflection of my physical axis are causing way less movement of the logical axis. I show here the translation curve of DCS because this game displays it way better than War Thunder. And as you can see, this gives me a lot more control over the plane in very important areas of joystick deflection. The movement in those areas is critical for aiming and for smooth, precise maneuvers. I now deflect my joystick about 50% to the rear, and the logical axis is now only deflected by yeah, maybe 20-30%, to 30%, which means that the digital pilot now only pulled with that amount. But if I pull more to the rear, you can observe that the logical axis is catching up and at 100% both values are meeting again. You see that after yeah, maybe 60-70% of real joystick deflection, the virtual pilot pulls expansionally harder on the stick, which means for us, we have a lot more control in the lower segments of deflection, but we lost a bit of deflection resolution in the higher segments. With a bit experience, we will master the steep curve at the end, and you can ride stalls and can control your plane just perfect. I can recommend to increase the non-linearity to at least 1.5 or 2, but remember, higher is not always better. The curve gets really steep if you set it too high, so fiddle a bit around to find your personal sweet spot here. The next option I want to show you is the multiplier. This option does what it sounds like. It multiplies your input with a set value. For demonstration's sake, I set up a value of 2, and as you can see, the logical axis is already freaking out at 50% of physical joystick deflection. No wonder, because my input gets doubled right now. Not a good idea, in my opinion, to set up a value like this. But of course, this works the other way around. We can set up values below 1, for example 0.95. What does it, you may ask? This value is basically a cutoff. When I now pull back the stick fully to the rear, you can see the logical axis don't move this a whole way back. I would say it's not really needed anymore for me, but I think uh, it was really helpful for me at the beginning and I think it will be uh, very helpful for other beginners. The reason you want to cut off a few percent of your joystick deflection is very simple. You avoid those critical angle of attack in all maneuvers. Most beginners tend to oversteer their plane, so they're pulling too hard on the stick in maneuvers. And yeah, and when you just cut off those high deflections, the plane can't be oversteered anymore. Of course, in some planes you lose a bit of maneuverability, but like I said, those really critical uh, deflections you don't need that often. I would say almost never. At the beginning I recommend to make a cutoff by 10% and uh, after a few hours I recommend to raise the multiplier again a bit and work your way back to 100%. It's really important to get the feeling for the plane and for the deflection curves and that's the reason I recommend to move it slowly back to 100 after some time. But remember that this value works together with the non-linearity. The effect of both values are adding up. Now I want to 
briefly mention the dead zone and the correction value. The dead zone does what it says, it creates a spot around the zero deflection of the physical uh, joystick where the game doesn't translate any input to the game. That is useful when you have a worn out joystick and in the normal case you get input without even moving your joystick yourself. Again, just for demonstration's sake, I move the slider fully forward and as you can see the indicators of the logical axis aren't moving until I reach 50% of physical deflection. In reality this is of course not used with those high values, this is of course used for very very little values. I have set up a really small dead zone for myself only because that my shivering hands don't cause any input into the game. The correction value is for similar purpose. This corrects the movement of a stick in a particular direction. Let's say you have a really damaged stick and it's pulling all the time in one direction. Just select a value which counteracts this movement. And now we are finished with the pitch axis. And don't worry, we don't have to change a lot more. Your flight experience should be way, way better now. The wobbling should stop and aiming should be a lot easier. We will test the results later on. But I just have to recommend to take a look at the yaw axis. The axis controls the rudder. The rudder of the plane is used to counter the engine torque at takeoff, mid-flight and to assist rolls and to slow down the plane in some cases. And sometimes you have to aim with the rudder as well. I can recommend to reduce the sensitivity a bit and to set up a non-linearity value similar to the value of the pitch axis. You want to be able to make slow and precise input here as well. If you have problems taking off because you can't counter the engine torque at full rudder deflection, you should increase the sensitivity again until you have sufficient control of the rudder. Last but not least, the roll axis. In my own controls I haven't touched it. It's still in default. The roll axis controls the ailerons. The ailerons aren't a factor in stalls. I see no need to change something. If you have a reason to change anything, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. But I personally don't see any reason for a change here. Okay, you might ask, what's up with the rest of the settings? Well, the rest is mostly up to you, I think, and mostly personal preference. You should choose on which button you want to shoot and on which button you want to retract your gear. A few thoughts here though. With a bit experience you want only the really important stuff to be on the buttons of the joystick. Therefore all things you want to have to use mid-air and with your hands on stick and throttle. Like flaps and the map and zooming in for example. All other stuff like retracting gear or engine on off I keep on the keyboard. I leave the joystick for the important stuff. Maybe another tip, I have different buttons for the guns. I want to be able to shoot them separately. For example, when a guy is almost out of gun range, I don't want to fire those precious cannons. I want to use the MG to bring him to turn around. So I set up my MG on the trigger and the cannons on the button on the top of the joystick. But now, like promised, let's see the results of our new config. And as you can see, the wobbling is gone, I can fly my plane just perfect. I can attack the carrier now without any big problems. Okay, my, my shitty aim is still there, but it's not the game's fault anymore. So I can aim just fine. As you can see as well, I can fly my plane to the limits. So you see those contrails at the wingtips, that means my plane is almost at the stall. I don't have any problems to get the plane to the performance limits here. And this is really the last tip for the video. If you have a new config, just go into a test flight and fly a plane around and check if you can fly the plane to the performance limits. Check if you can reach the stalls, that you have the best turn performance if you need it and that you can control your plane just fine. But that's really it. If you want to download my setup file or you want to look it up, the file itself and a screenshot is in the description. Like and shares are highly appreciated. Stay subscribed if you want to see more. There are more videos coming, like the engine and the trim video for example, but I plan to do a Trekkie R tutorial as well. See you in the next video. Bye bye.